Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is Christopher Aaron from iGold Advisor. It is time that we have a proper gold and silver price forecast. We have not looked at both metals at the same time in quite some weeks, so I want to do that with you right now, as always, from a technical basis, focusing on what we argue matters most, which is the price, right? What is more important than the price? Before we get into it, I want to remind you, if you're new to this channel, hit the red subscribe button and make sure to hit the bell icon because if you don't get notified when these videos come out, then you can't watch them and then you cannot benefit from the information. So do those things and we will be good to go. Let's look at gold and silver over the last three days here first, as we typically do. So gold had a big sell-off yesterday. That was Tuesday here, October 6th. Um, and it was very interesting, the reason for the sell-off. What we saw is that President Trump, uh, you know, after he has gotten back to the White House after apparently recovering from the coronavirus, to some extent or another, um, he came out on Twitter here at about two o'clock in the afternoon. You know, gold had already sold off about uh, $10 or so from the average highs that we were seeing in here. But he came out on Twitter and he posted that he's no longer going to be negotiating for the next round of stimulus, uh, which was the big ticket on the plate. Is the government going to pass another round of stimulus? Now, we all know that stimulus really doesn't work in the long run because all they're doing is printing money to give it mostly to favored institutions and then a little money to the average person on the street, but relatively little in the grand scheme of things. However, for what it's worth, President Trump did decide to cut the talks to the stimulus. So clearly the market had already priced in some of that stimulus. Uh, and so if now all of a sudden there's not going to be the stimulus in the near future, that accounts for the $30 sell-off that we saw here in gold at the end of the day. Uh, now, it is worth noting that gold did not see continuation selling uh, today on Wednesday. So that's notable. And in fact, there was a bit of buying that came in in the overnight session in Asia and into uh, right before the London Open. But we did see stability today. So is it possible that now the market has fully priced in no stimulus, at least before the election? And then let's say perhaps the markets get surprised and Trump goes either back to the negotiation table with the Democrats or maybe right after the election, some stimulus bill is passed either by Trump or by Biden, depending on who wins. So if the market has now priced in no stimulus, and they then announce stimulus, the argument is that there's going to be uh, something of a recovery here in the price of gold and a slackening in the dollar, which was the beneficiary during this sell-off here yesterday. So let's keep that in mind here over the next few weeks. Market has already priced in no stimulus. And so we saw that sell-off in silver uh, and seeing something like a uh, 80 cent recovery today in the price of silver. Uh, and I would say, although the recovery is modest, it's important that we didn't see follow through selling today from the selling yesterday. So let's move on and talk about where we are with gold from a technical basis. We're looking at the intermediate term picture from the 2018 low through the bottom. Uh, through the, the peak recently in August, the new all-time high here above 2,070 per ounce. And we were talking about this two weeks ago, the massive number of hits here on this upper rising resistance boundary uh, going back for two years. And then we had seen the breakout follow through. And then we had seen, we talked about this two weeks ago, we were anticipating this low to come in. Now, sure enough, this one held. We've seen a bit of a slackening again. And what are we seeing again? Another attempt at a low at this broken resistance now turned into support. So look, you know, we've already seen a $200 decline in the price of gold. 
the bias on this kind of pattern remains that the broken resistance is going to continue acting as support. And so the bias is still that this low may be in here and that we begin to round up again and then slack in a bit of again after we are challenging some of these peaks here in the mid 1900s and then get ready for the more significant move higher uh, right after the election slash in the months following the election early 2021. So isn't this timing kind of working out very interestingly with what we're seeing uh, in the mainstream news as far as the possibility that the election may be contested and you know who knows I mean does this get uh, does this get violent or or you know are there riots one way or another depending on who wins but one way or another it looks like that window leading into the election and immediately following the election is when we should see some fireworks now so the strategy here is that one should have a significant uh, exposure to the precious metal sector at this point whether you're talking about physical gold, whether you're talking about ETFs, whether you're talking about gold mining companies, you should have significant exposure at this point. And with the possibility that if this rising support here were to fail, this would be one of those technical sell-offs only. It would be one of those times where, you know, JP Morgan and the big banks come in and, and throw a couple thousand futures contracts onto the market to trigger everyone here following this support, clearly, and do we get something like a quick $100 additional sell-off back to the mid-1700s, upper 1700s, uh, where the longer-term analysis comes into play, and we're not going to look at that right now. That will be going out to premium subscribers this weekend. So if you think about this, if we were to get that negative, more negative sell-off here, what we're talking about is that we're already two thirds of the way through the sell off and maybe there's $100 more for it to come. So what we're arguing here is that the, the majority of the correction is already behind us. Is there a technical trigger that gets us one more $100 to the downside? We do not have a crystal ball. We cannot answer that question. But it looks by all means that the majority of the decline is over. The bias is for support to hold. If we get that technical sell-off, it'll be one of those quick V bottoms, $100 lower, a couple of weeks later, $100 higher, and we begin clawing our way back up the opposite side of this trend line here. It pushes that off a couple of months into the future. That is the message of the markets when we look at the intermediate term and the support that is still holding. Now, switching over to look at silver, and we will look at the short term only for silver going back to the coronavirus lows. Very clear pattern that is shaping up here. We talked a few weeks ago about how we were expecting this low to hold here, matching some of these lows immediately following the first surge from the coronavirus, all these lows in here in June before that big breakout that we were talking about back in July. And that this now coming back here to match that rising support very nicely. And so what's forming here very clear, you can see in blue, is a nice consolidation triangle. And so the bias is for this pattern to hold and a bit of a continuation advance here, uh, followed by resistance coming in here again at the double blue line somewhere in the zone. It won't be a perfect hit on one of these lines. There's a bit of variability here in the downtrend. You can see this is expanding over time but that we do get a sell off here in the region of the $26 mark back to 2350 back to 24 and the market basically claws its way into the later regions of this triangle into mid November or so. Um, a triangle is a continuation pattern generally speaking and therefore it is a continuation pattern in favor of the previous trend which was higher. And so we are expecting this pattern to resolve upward for silver into the middle part of November, perhaps by the end of the year. Just as we said uh, for gold, if some of those big banks were to come in here and shove a bunch of silver onto the market all at once, 
we would get one of those very quick final washouts here back to 1850 or $19. It would be one of these V bottoms in our book. It would be basically the last chance to buy anything related to silver in anything with a one handle, anything in the teens uh, before this market does a quick recovery on the next wave of inflation. And we could be talking about the possibility of never looking at silver in the teens ever again in our lifetimes. So I am talking about the bias being now. So the strategy that we are implementing here at iGold Advisor for our clients is to be mostly invested at this point, whether you're talking about the silver mining equities, uh, whether you're talking about silver futures contracts or the physical metal, being mostly invested at this point, but saving a little bit of capital on the side in case we get that one final flush. Again, bias is that the triangle pattern holds, keeping a little bit on the side for that one possibility of the technical sell-off. If you're interested in these kind of videos, I want to let you know these go out weekly, not every other week, but weekly to premium members in the subscription called Precious Metals Intelligence. We cover not only gold and silver over the intermediate term as we've done here, we cover short-term targets, we cover long-term targets, we cover the US dollar, which is intrinsically related to gold and silver. And this is what's giving us a lot of our conviction as to what to expect here for gold and silver. We cover the US stock market, which was intrinsically related to gold. We cover the rest of the commodities market, which is intrinsically related to gold. We are trying to give you here, this comes from my, my work uh, briefing military leaders in Afghanistan, which is what I did in 2007 and 2009. We approach this from the standpoint of a weekly brief that goes out to you in the format that you're seeing now, but much more in depth. That gets you your situational awareness. That gets you where are we now? What do you need to know for the week? And then also in this exact same service, you get written updates that contain the exact gold miners that we are buying and selling here, as well as any of the trades that we are making. This goes out to you in flash updates right to your inbox. I highly encourage you, if you're serious about investing in the precious metals, I highly encourage you to check out this subscription service. It will make you a better informed investor. If you would like to work one-on-one -on -one with me, the other thing that I do is individual consultations. We have clients from across the board. Those who are just starting out with their first few thousand dollars, trust me, nothing is too small that we can't work with here. Everyone starts at some point. There's nothing that's embarrassing. If you've never bought a gold coin or a silver coin and you're you know, concerned that some of the dealerships may try to take advantage of you or try to get you to buy something that maybe you shouldn't buy, I am fully independent at iGold Advisor. And so I am able to give you the down low for real without having to sell you any products. We speak just like this one-on-one -on -one, by phone or by Skype, whatever is most convenient with you. For those who are more advanced up through multi-million dollar portfolios, I work with you as well. And we sit down and we look at your current situation. We look and make sure you're properly balanced, properly diversified. And then we dial it in into the precious metals and we look to make sure that you will benefit and that you are protected during this next rise in the metals as it develops. So I look forward to working with you one way or another, whether it is by consultation or whether you want to join our member service only for some of these more in-depth videos. Either way, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you'll get notified when the free videos come out. Hit the red bell icon and watch these support levels right now for gold and silver because if these things hold, then it is strongly looking like the lows are already in. And this could be a very exciting period of time leading up to the election and into early 2021. Thank you, and I'll see you again in a couple of weeks.